Hi children, welcome to our next class. In last class, you learned about the stem, the functions of stem, and uh, how to divide the plants, the types of plants we had seen, right? And in today's class, the other parts which are very important in a plant always will be green in color. Which parts those are? Leaves, right? So in today's class, we are going to learn about leaves. Your lesson number 7 about leaves we are reading now. And leaves. And yesterday's class you learned about the structure of the parts of a plant. You already learned children. You know very well what parts are present in a plant. And the shoot system, plumule from the plumule that shoot system grows. So this shoot system bear the parts which are green in color always. Because why the leaves are always green in color? Because the pigment, a pigment present in them called as chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is present in leaves. Because of this, they look green in color always. How our blood is red in color, everybody, any person blood you see will be red in color only. In the same way, most of the plants have green color leaves. Some plants like crotons and all have, some plants will be in other colors. But those plants are also having chlorophyll but in less percentage hidden under that colored part. Colored part will be upper in croton plants. Below that chlorophyll is also present in them. Okay. So now these leaves from where they are arising from the stem. They are arranged on the stem. They come from the stem. So the place from where the leaf is coming. Leaf is arising. This place is known as node. The place where the leaf is arising known as node. So the from the node the leaves are arising. The gap between one node to the other node. There is little gap between one node to the other node. This gap is known as internode. The gap between two nodes known as internode. So the leaf from where it is arising is node. And the gap between two nodes known as internode. And this part which is connecting leaf to the stem called as, you learn this part as stalk in lower classes. And you can also call it as petiole. Petiole. The part which is connecting leaf to the stem known as stalk or petiole. Now we will see the structure of leaf. What actually, which parts present in the leaf. So what's the parts a green leaf contain? What parts these leaves are contain? And how can we identify all the parts present in a leaf? We are going to read. So our today's topic is parts of a leaf. Parts of a leaf. You are going to read about parts of a leaf. I will show you the different types of leaves. These all the leaves are of different plants. Are you all finding any same character or same type of future among all these different plant leaves? Yes, you are right. All the whatever it may be the plant. They are of different plants. But even though they all are in green color. So all the leaves are in which color? Green color. Why they are in green color? Because they are having the pigment, these all you will read in your coming classes. They have chlorophyll pigment in this. Because of that they appear green in color. So now we will see what parts present in a leaf. Now observe this part. The upper part, this is smooth. The 
upper part and this is the lower part of a leaf. To observe the parts of a leaf, you need to see the lower part. Lower part gives you more clear idea about the different parts of a plant. Okay, so now we will see a leaf. The down part of a leaf we will see what are the different parts present in this leaf. So we are going to read now parts of a leaf. What are the different parts present in a leaf we will see now. So these are the different parts, the lower part of a leaf you observe. You can see the lines, some lines are present on this leaf. So these lines are known as veins. We will call them as veins. The lines are known as veins. And in these veins, one vein is very clear and a big vein is present in the middle, right? This is known as, the big vein is known as mid vein. This is known as mid vein. And this flat green color part up top side and down side, the green color part is known as leaf blade. So, this green color part is known as leaf blade. Leaf blade. Before knowing this, to understand all these parts, you can do one small activity. You take one leaf like this at home. To do this, you need one paper, white paper and any leaf, leaf of any plant you take and keep under the um, Paper. Keep this uh, leaf under the paper. Under the paper you keep like this. And slightly you are able to see the leafy structure here in an above paper. Now take a crayon. Nicely you shade. You do the coloring on the leaf. Okay. And after doing crayon color, then remove this leaf. And do the outline. So you will get a leafy structure on the leaf. After doing this activity. Then you try to label the parts of your leaf. So the leaf. The green part. Soft upper part. Is known as leaf blade. And the veins. The lines which are present on the leaf. These are the. Veins. Small lines present on the leaf are veins. And this is the big vein which is present known as mid vein. So this leaf is connected to the stem. Leaf is connected to a stem known as stalk. All the leaves are connected to stem, right? So, this part which is connecting the leaf with stem is known as stalk. And these are leaf margins where this, the end of the leaf is known as leaf margin. Leaf margin, leaf blade, side veins, mid vein. The veins which are at the, from the mid vein, they are known as side veins. They are side veins, leaf blade, mid vein, stalk. So these are the different parts in a leaf. How do you have any body parts in you? Yes, of course, right? You have different body parts like your hands, like your legs, like your stomach. Same way that we just now seen the parts of a plant in the same way the different parts of a leaf children. So you collect some leaves around your home and you see the structure of leaf. Is it has the same parts and try to identify 
the parts which we are discussed in our class. Okay, children. Now, and the next topic is venation. We'll see how the veins are arranged in the leaves. Venation means the arrangement of veins in leaves known as venation. So every leaf will not have same type of venations. Now we will see a money plant leaf and a grass leaf if you observe or a tulsi leaf or the grass leaf when you observe. The veins will be in this way in grass leaf. In grass, all the veins will ar arise from same point and the, all the veins are same in size. So this type of venation is known as parallel venation. Parallel venation. We can see this type of venation in wheat. Grass, this type of plants, the plants which have fibrous roots, plants which have fibrous roots, those plants will have parallel venation. What's the meaning of fibrous roots? This we will see again in tomorrow's class. The roots which arise from same place. There is no particular main root. All the roots will grow in same size and from the same region they will arise. Such roots are called fibrous roots. So the roots, the plants which have fibrous roots, these all the plants will show the parallel venation. And like tulsi, you take one tulsi leaf, one, one grass leaf and compare the venation. Observe the venation. In tulsi leaf, when you see in tulsi leaf, the veins are not arising from same place. Small, the veins arise from different places on the leaf. You can observe the back side of your leaf to observe the venation. So this type of venation is known as reticulate venation. Reticulate venation you can see the plants which have tap root. The plants which are having tap root, those plants will have reticulate venation. That means there is a Main root in tap root system, one main root will be from this main root, all the other roots are growing. So, such root system is called tap root. So, all the plants which have tap root system show the venation of reticulate venation. So, now you understood the structure of leaf, the venation of leaves. Now, we will see the functions of leaf. What actually the leaves will do in plants? The functions of leaves we will discuss now. You all know that the plants are the kitchen of the plant. This you are learning right from your lower classes. It has the chlorophyll pigment. Just now I told you why they appear in green color. Due to this chlorophyll pigment, they are green in color. By the use of this pigment and they will use, they will take, absorb the water from roots. Water they are taking from the roots and minerals also they will take from the roots. And they are taking air. How they will take the air inside their leaf or they have nostrils like us. No, they have small pores on the leaf called as stomata. Very tiny pores present on the leaves known as stomata. So they use this stomata to take air inside. Mostly air is a mixture of many gases and they will use carbon dioxide gas specially. So they are using carbon dioxide. Uh, from the stomata they are taking carbon dioxide. They are using water. Minerals from the roots they are taking this 
and by using all this and they are also absorbing sunlight by using all these materials they are preparing their own food the food whichever needed for the plant to carry out all the functions that is supplied by the leaves okay so this process preparation of the food is known as photosynthesis this is only the special character of leaf no other living organism cannot do making their own food is known as photosynthesis so preparing doing photosynthesis is the main function of the leaf they are performing and the next one is not only preparing the food sometimes they are also storing food in some plants the leaves also storing food like the cabbage if you take cabbage the leaves are storing food because of that we are eating the cabbage the stored food is there in the cabbage actually that is not the function of the leaf it's only to prepare the leaf but sometimes they are even doing the extra function extra duties so after preparing the food they will pass on to the different parts for utilizing and excess food is also stored in the form of fruits that's what we are using as our food and is there any other functions what uh, plants leaves are performing in the plant one is they are doing photosynthesis they are exchanging the gases by stomata and they are preparing the food they are storing food and one more important function they are doing that is transpiration transpiration is nothing but the removing of excess water excess water how it will come in our body the excess amount of water comes out through our sweat glands which are present throughout our body in the form of sweat it's coming out it is helping it is one of the way to keep our body cool in the same way the same process is taking done by the leaves in plants they are releasing the excess water outside through stomata and it helps this process transpiration process is helping to cool the plants to keep the plants cool all the time so this process sending extra water outside is only known as transpiration so they are performing the transpiration process they are preparing the food they are exchanging the gases so these all are the different functions leaves are performing in plants now we will do one small activity how transpiration takes place in plants the other process is also taking place in plants that is transpiration transpiration is the another process which is taking place in plants transpiration means evaporation of water excess water from plants evaporation of evaporation of excess water from the plants and you all know that in leaves the tiny pores are present we call them as stomata so this stomata through the stomata the water gets evaporated comes out into the atmosphere this process is helping to keep the plant cool and also it's helping to create some pressure suction pressure is created by the process of transpiration you know that the xylem is helping to conduct the water from roots to the leaves that means the water molecules are traveling against to the gravitational force you know the gravitational force meaning you learnt in your physics so against to the gravitational force the water molecules are moving so whenever the transpiration the water is moving out to the environment into the atmosphere from the leaves the water is coming out so that it's creating a pressure in this stem and it is pulling the water from down 
to the leaves again. So it's creating some suction pressure because of the transpiration. So the transpiration process is removing of excess water from the leaves or evaporation process which takes place in leaves known as transpiration. To understand even the transpiration process, you can do one more small activity. Choose any healthy plant in your surroundings, in your home, any potted plant also you can take. And in that potted plant, one healthy leaf you choose. Don't pluck out the leaf. And around the leaf, take a polythene cover and cover this leaf. Tightly tie the cover at the at nod at the petiole of this leaf. And keep this apparatus or let this cover to be at least for one day. And the next day morning, you slowly remove this cover and observe inside the cover, you can see some droplets of water. So this water, where does it came? The water molecules are formed because of transpiration process which occurred in the leaves. So in today's class, you learned about leaves children, types of leaves. And the venation you learn, the structure of you, the leaf you learn, and the functions of leaf also you learn, right? And your today's homework is draw the diagram of structure of a leaf, structure of a leaf, and label the parts. Neatly draw the diagram and label all the parts which are present in a leaf. And you also draw the Types of venations. Types of venation. Types of venations you draw and label that. In tomorrow's class, we'll discuss about the roots. Thank you.